Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to see how can we combine bibliography data extracted from multiple databases using the SiteSpace software. So we are going to do it in two steps. The first steps, we have to convert our bibliography data set extracted from any extracted from any other database other than web of science into the web of science format so we are going to do that using the convert option in the site space tool because the site space software works mainly with the web of science data format so we have to convert any other format of data into web of science and then using a utility function which is prepared for the web of science data we will merge the two data sets, okay? So that are the two steps and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So we already know by now that for site space, we normally have to create two folders. One is data and one is project. And in the data folder, we put our data set for analysis and in the project folder, we get the outputs. So in the first step, as I mentioned, that we have to convert our data file from any other data set than any other database than web of science into web of science. So for example, here I have two data files, one from Scopus and one from web of science. I'm not going to do anything with the web of science for now, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to move it to our data folder. Okay. And you might have noticed that here I have the RIS format file. So for site space, the preferred version or format of data from Scopus is RIS, but the CSV also works fine, okay? But if you have RIS, then great. And by now, you should already know that we should have the word download in front of a data file for it to be detected by the site space software, right? So I just add a download and that's it. And I can maybe just to I can remove these uh, dashes from here just to avoid any confusion for the software. So now we have this data file where we have the Scopus data and then we have our project which is empty where we will see our outputs. So now we are going to run the conversion from Scopus to Web of Science. So to do that, we are coming here on our SiteSpace software and I'm going to click and create a new project I'm going to call it Marge, okay? And then I'm going to browse the location of the folder, which is actually on my desktop. So desktop, then it should be site space and the data. So this is my, actually, no, it should be project folder. So this is my project folder, open. And here I go for the data. So here's my data and open. Great. And then it is a Scopus data file. So I'm going to use this. And I'm going to use more or less the same um, parameters as you can see here. Okay. Here maybe I will use number minus one to retain all uh, linking factors. Okay. That's mainly it. And for here also I will use minus one to look back to all the pre previous years in the data file and then save. So that's all here. But now I'm going to go here. So if I want to just analyze this data, then I can just go here and go and start my analysis. But my goal is not to analyze the data now. My goal is to convert the Scopus file from Scopus to Web of Science. So I go to data and I go here, import and export. If you, I'm using the 5.7 version of the software. So if you are using another version, it might be, it might appear in a different place, but more or less you will find this tool, uh, whichever version you are using, okay? So I go here, import and export. I click here on a scoop us, okay? And then I select my data files. And to do that, I go again to my desktop, then side space. And the first one is about the input directory. So which is this one data file. 
and the output directory should be my project okay so I'm going to the same place again selecting site space and project okay so now I'm going to click this button here from Scopus RIS to Web of Science and here as you can see if you had a CSV file you could use this one but I'm going to click here and let's hope it works yeah so you see uh, it converted 335 records it took me like two seconds maybe for these to work depending on your data set and depending on your computer it might take different time duration it might take like five minutes ten minutes something like that but for me here at the moment it took two seconds okay and you see we have like 97 percent conversion so in this conversion process because there could be some data attributes missing in our the extracted data file from scopus which are required for the web of science some of the data records could be lost and that's okay if we have like above 95 percent that's pretty good okay okay then so we are done with the first step now that we ex we converted our scopus to web of science now we are going to remove the duplicates and merge them okay so i'm closing it here now and i'm going to now st start the process for the step two so i'm again going to my folder here and under project you will see i have my data file here download converted one great right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this ris for file from here so i'm going to press ctrl x to cut it and then i'm going to move it here back okay and now i'm going to copy also this version the converted version i'm going to cut it and i'm going to put it in the main data folder and we know this is scopus right great and our web science originally extracted file is this one so i'm going to now cut this one and paste it here in the same folder both the files okay then i'm just going to rename this i'll put the download in front of it because it is a requirement for site space to work and i will also remove these ones just for the software to uh, find it easily okay so now this is the file which is the original web science file and this is the file which was originally extracted from scopus but converted to the web of science format using the site space software and now we are going to load both of them and we are going to remove the duplicates from the two files okay so this is our second step and to do that before we do that we can also remove everything we have here so from the project for to make it empty so that whenever we are going to do some analysis with these two data files it will come into our project folder okay so i'm keeping only the data files on the data folder and I'm keeping the project folder empty, okay? So now I come to my site space software again, right? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to again here on data and import and export. And again, I'm repeating, if you're using a different version, I'm using version 5.7. If you, you are using older version or a uh, latest, later version, depending on when you're watching this video you might have a different uh, you might see this option in a different place but the option will be there okay so here i'm going to import export again and now i'm clicking on web of science okay and then my input directory it should be the data folder i have it in the right place desktop site space data okay and my output folder is the project folder great at the moment we are not seeing the option but i'm going to make it bigger and then we will see the option you see the remove duplicates way of science so now this is what i'm going to run i'm going to run this remove duplicate and for remove duplicates what is it that you want to retain we have few different types but I want to retain article and only the single source okay so I'm just going to say okay go ahead and start and you see we have now total article found 500 and 
33 of which we had like 481 article we had six uh, editorial material and 46 review but we are now keeping the unique records of only article which are 438 there were 43 duplicates which are removed and other like review and editorial other things uh, there were 95 which are discarded we could actually take all of them uh, that wouldn't have been a problem we could have just clicked here and it would retain it but for now i just focused on article so you can try with the different uh, you want to keep the reviews and editorials as well and see how it works and here you see our year so our first article is on the year 2007 and then the latest one was on the year 2011 right and here we see the information so great now i'm going to close it again so now we can just start with the uh, data analysis and see how it goes so we click here on go actually I should have fixed the timeline it should have been 2007 and yeah this is okay and here I'm going to make it like top 50 for the for our clustering okay so that I, I prefer that If I go to visualize here this is our result of co-citation network as you can see and as long as it is running that means uh, it has not finished the analysis so it's uh, running at the moment uh, it will stop when it has done finishing the analysis right now I see that it is running for a couple of minutes and it's not really uh, stopping here. We can already see some detail about the, um, about the data set here. And I'm just going to click here on this clustering command. Yeah, so when I run this now, you see we have clear clusters, right? So after I click there, now we see that we have some clear clusters. So I just didn't want to wait uh, more longer, okay, so to get these results. And here the matrix looks okay. I think they are above our recommended thresholds. So normally we know that the value of mean uh, can it, it ranges from minus 1 to 1 and the closer to 1 it is uh, pretty good. So here it's pretty close to one, so that's pretty good. Although the modularity value is not very high, but if we combine both of them, it's not really that bad. So it uh, looks pretty okay. Here we see that we have some, uh, I, I, maybe it's better if I can zoom in a little bit here, then we can see it in a better way. Here we see that for the name of the clusters here we see that the names the sustainable supply chain it is repeated here so we can play with different algorithms for the name of the cluster so normally when we run it the first time it uses uh, this one the label clusters with the tidal items then we can try another one like here the label clusters with indexing items we can also use the abstract items okay so we can use different algorithms and see how it looks like okay and it could be a good idea to add some colors here for the cluster so now it looks um, pretty okay and still i see that there are some repeated names for the clusters so that's not ideal normally if we read the papers in the clusters then we will see that the names are maybe different and then we can actually edit these names manually as well and here because of my screen you cannot see the other control panel that we have here so which I can move let's say here and we can uh, play with these thresholds and uh, see how our map changes right we can also go to layout and here we have the cluster view we can also change to other views like timeline view so you see that looks really cool here with the timeline view and so 
you can play with it a lot and get a lot of things out of it which i have normally discussed in my detailed lectures on the side space but here in this lecture the main idea was to show you how you can combine data extracted from multiple databases i've shown you an example of the scoopus database but if you look here you see that you can actually do the same for many other databases like dimensions crossref pubmed Okay, and some Chinese databases even you can do it with the CSV file but then you have to format the file in order like this okay so thank you for listening to this lecture I hope by now you know how to merge multiple data files uh, using the side space tool and do your bibliometric analysis